Welcome. Welcome, welcome to the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair. We have an awesome lineup of institutions for you to hear from this evening. But before I turn it over to them, I have a couple of housekeeping items for you. Number one, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you this evening. Next, this is a really fun format. Um, and so there are a whole set of other opportunities for you to hear from other colleges and institutions, even tonight. So there's two more hours of these. So we hope that you'll sign up for more sessions. This session is being recorded this evening and that recording will be available within one week at strivescan.com slash Carolinas. And we know that you're gonna have some questions. So at any point that you have a question tonight, make sure that you put that in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen, type out your question, and then also list the college or university that you're directing your question to so that they can answer appropriately. Finally, this is a six by six format, which means you're gonna hear from six schools um, and they each only have six minutes to present. It's gonna be fun and it's gonna go really fast. So we hope that you really enjoy it. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our panelists. First up, you'll have the opportunity to hear from the University of North Carolina, Asheville. Take it away whenever you're ready, Sarah. Thank you so much, Courtney. Um, and thank you to everyone who has joined us tonight. I wish that we were able to have you on campus, but we will uh, share as much information as we can and hopefully get you guys on campus soon. I work at University of North Carolina, Asheville. We are the liberal arts and sciences institution for the UNC system. So our focus is on making sure that we're uh, engaging our students throughout across disciplines, teaching you to see connections within and between disciplines and giving you a breadth and depth of knowledge. Uh, we believe that nothing happens in a bubble, particularly in an increasingly interconnected world. And so we want to make you the best biologist that you can be by teaching you how to have informed conversations with a sociologist. Um, so that is our approach to our education. We empower students to make connections um, and collaborate and create across disciplines. The way that we are able to do that is with our small class sizes. So we have 3,300 students on our campus. Our average class size is about 20. And we have a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. Uh, all of our courses are faculty taught. So we don't have teacher's assistants in the front of our classrooms. You're not competing with master's level students and PhD candidates for office hours and access to your professors. Our professors are there to empower our students from the first semester of their freshman year to find their calling, even if they're not sure what that is when they start on our campus. We also, uh, another hallmark of our approach to learning at UNC Asheville and our academic experience is going to be our undergraduate research program. So we helped found the National Conference on Undergraduate Research, and we have about 70% of our students complete original research while they're at UNC Asheville. We'll have students publish their research every year. We have students present at conferences and at our symposium on campus. And it just helps prepare students, uh, regardless of whether or not they want to go to grad school or med school, um, or straight into their professional field uh, to be the best that they can be in their chosen fields. Of course, a big part of college is your academic experience. You see on the screen our list of over 30 majors. I'll point out just a couple. Our top five are going to be biology, psychology, health and wellness promotion, new media, and environmental studies. But we also have a variety of more unique programs at UNC Asheville, including atmospheric science, uh, arts management and entrepreneurship, mechatronics engineering, music technology, and an interdisciplinary studies program that allows you to kind of design your own major and uh, choose your own path. Uh, here also is a list of some additional minors in our pre-professional programs, including a teacher licensure program. Uh, we make sure that we are pairing students with advisors across campus uh, to set them up for success, regardless of which pathway they choose. Um, and then, so the hardest thing, uh, outside of the academic experience for me to really sell about Asheville is where we get to call home. Um, but I'm gonna do my best really briefly. So our campus sits less than two miles from the heart of downtown. It's about a five minute drive from campus. Restaurants, cart, uh, concert venues and art galleries, the best of what the city of Asheville has to offer in terms of cultural resources is just a stone throw from our campus and available for our students to enjoy. The city of Asheville itself also offers small town comfort and big city convenience. So it's kind of a best of both worlds for our students as they learn to navigate life on their own in a new city. 
On the other hand, we also are about 10 minutes from the Blue Ridge Parkway. So hiking, biking, camping trips, um, or just an opportunity to kind of get away from all of the buzz of the city um, and appreciate the beauty that, of the surrounding area is super close for our students as well. We have guided trips from our outdoor programs um, and also just equipment for students to rent if they want to go by themselves. While we have all of this going on off campus, we also have a very active student body on our campus. We have over 80 clubs and organizations for students to get involved in, 16 Division I varsity sports, um, and our first year students are allowed to have cars on campus so that everything off campus is accessible. Uh, they also get to ride the city bus for free with their student ID, and we have a variety of shuttle services, so transportation is never an issue for students. Um, on our campus at UNC Asheville, everything's very accessible. Um, and we also have all suite style housing. So even though our first year students are required to live on campus, um, we don't have community style bathrooms. You're not gonna be sharing with 30 other students. It's just you and a roommate and two suite mates sharing your own space so that there's also a little bit more opportunity to retreat if that's what you need uh, to thrive on campus. A little bit about our applications. Um, these deadlines are subject to change a little bit, but we are an early decision school. So just be mindful that as you build your list and do your research, um, that if you apply early to you in Seattle, that is a binding decision. Our deadlines uh, will be around November and January um, and then February for regular decision. We also offer students an opportunity to apply via CFNC or the Common App. Um, and we're hoping to be able to participate this coming fall in free college application week the same way we did this past year. In terms of what's going to be required on that application, we'll need your application fee or an application fee waiver. Um, the application itself, again, it does. we don't have a preference in our office. Um, an official transcript, uh, SAT or ACT scores, if the state decides later this week that those will be required for applying freshmen. And then we only require one recommendation from a teacher or a counselor, but you can submit multiple. We know that several schools do require more than one. And so we will accept any and every piece of supplemental information that you want to share with us as part of your application for admission. We truly take a holistic review of our application review. We enjoy getting to know our students and what they've achieved throughout high school so that we can get a sense of who they are and what they're gonna bring with them to campus. Um, so please show us uh, what you're proud of so that we can really embrace who you are and what you'll bring to campus when you come. We are gonna be open throughout the summer for tours. So feel free to schedule a time to come and see us. Like I said, it's really hard to sell via Zoom, uh, but also there's my contact information. I will share it in the chat as well. And we look forward to being able to see you in person and connect very soon. Thank you guys so much. Sarah. Thanks so much to you and the University of North Carolina Asheville for a great presentation. Audience, don't forget, you can put those questions in the Q&A at any point. Um, just type your question and also list out the college or university that you're directing your question to. You don't have to wait for a particular institution to present in order to ask your question. Next up, I have the privilege of introducing to you USC Upstate. Take it away, Becca, whenever you're ready. All right, hey guys. Let me share my screen really quickly. All right, so uh, my name is Becca. I'm a freshman admissions counselor here at USC Upstate, and I am so stoked to tell you guys a little bit about our school. So hey, Becca. Oh, yeah. Just real quick, if you click on um, display settings up at the top, we'll see the full screen. Let's see display settings. Oh, oh, right there, right there. And then go swap presentation, yep. Perfect, is that it? I'm waiting for it to update on my side. Let's see, because it's the whole screen on my side. So hopefully no, it, again? Yeah, maybe it's, I'm still seeing the, the one with the notes. Oh, that's so weird, hang on. Um, display settings, swap. Got it, is that doing it there? Not yet. It's so weird. It's it's on my screen. Um, Rads, I don't want to take up too much time. Well, I haven't started your settings yet. I haven't started your time yet. But oh, um, perfect. Okay, okay. If you want to yeah. maybe stop it, stop share, and we'll try it one more time. Okay. Let's try it again. This is how technology works. Sometimes you just <laughs> never know what to expect. It's so frustrating. Did that do it that time? Perfect. 
Okay, great. All right, so let me start over. All right, so like I said, my name is Becca, and I'm a freshman admissions counselor here at USC Upstate. Um, we are located in Spartanburg, South Carolina, which is right in between Atlanta and Charlotte. Um, we are the number one public regional college in the South. We were voted number one for the second year in a row by US News and World Report. We're also recognized as a college of distinction, along with our business, education, and nursing programs. So basically what that means is that those specific programs, along with Upstate as a whole, they've been recognized nationally for their excellence. So when you come here, you're already a step ahead of everybody else by choosing a great school. So we've got over 6,000 students enrolled here on campus from 29 states and 14 different nations. We've got a student to faculty ratio of 18 to one and the average class size being 25 students. And one thing that we love to boast is that almost 100% of our full-time faculty have the highest degree in their settings or in their field. So when you come here, not only with those small classes are you going to get that one-on-one -on -one time with your professor, but you are also going to learn the skills and knowledge you need to be successful in your careers. Um, we also have over 40 majors and minors to choose from, so whatever path you guys choose, you are, you're headed in a great way. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about our campus and student life. So we've got a 330 acre campus and we take up about a million square feet in, in facility space. We've got over 15 NCAA Division I sports teams and we are a part of the Big South Conference. We've got over 90 student-led clubs and organizations along with 13 fratern fraternity and sorority chapters. And just a few of the services that we offer here on campus, we offer tutoring, counseling, and disability. All services are free to students. All you have to do is, uh, is uh, make an appointment. We've got tons of intramural sports teams and you can also uh, start your own sports teams. In fact, we encourage it. We love when new intramural teams come up. And we have what you call Upstate 48, which is the first 48 days of nonstop events of every new school year. And some of our most popular ones are Rocktoberfest, Stadium Party, and we have Homecoming Week, which they have a ton of events just in that week itself. So let's talk a little bit about financial aid. So about 80% of our upstate students receive some kind of, of financial aid to make sure their tuition is covered. So whether it's merit-based scholarships or state scholarships, foundation scholarships, grants, loans, work study, whatever it is, upstate wants to make sure you have what you need, you have options to, to cover your tuition because we want you guys to get the best education possible with the least amount of debt because nobody wants 100 grand in student loans. So Upstate wants to make sure you guys have that at your disposal. All right, now I know you guys are thinking, well, this just sounds like an amazing school. How the heck do I apply? Well, it's a really easy process. You'll just go to our website at uscupstate.edu slash apply. You'll submit a $45 application fee, or you can get an application fee waiver from your guidance counselor, and we'll just need a few documents. So we need your high school transcript, and we need your test scores. Now, as of right now for 2021, we are test optional, which means um, that we aren't requiring your SAT or AC scores right now. We do, however, still have some requirements. So in order to be considered test optional, you need to have a 3.0 GPA and you need to be in at least the top 30% of your class. Now, if you don't meet that criteria, it's totally okay. We've got some minimum requirements too. We like to see at least a 2.0, at least a 19 on your ACT and at least a 950 on your SAT. Um, and we don't have a hard deadline for applications. We, we have what you call rolling admissions. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it just means that as applications come in, our processors are making the decisions like as they come in. So it's not a hard deadline where all of them come in and then, and then they make decisions. So, so don't worry about those dates right there. And lastly, we want you guys to come visit us. So we offer weekday tours every day, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. You can schedule a campus tour on our website. Um, and we also have what you, what you call open house and Fab Friday events, which are both just comprehensive views of the campus. Um, you can learn about our majors and our programs. You can meet some of our students. You can meet some of our faculty. You can take a tour of the campus and you can have lunch in our delicious dining hall. So yep, just go to uscupstate.edu you and then click visit and you can schedule a campus tour. But that's everything I have for you guys. I will leave my contact information in the chat below, but we want to see you guys become a Spartan. So let me know if you guys need anything. Becca, thanks so much to you and 
USC Upstate, we really appreciate your great presentation. Next up, I have the opportunity to introduce to you the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Alex, take it away whenever you're ready. Thank you, Courtney. I, I appreciate the introduction. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Alex Wadsworth. I'm an assistant director of admissions at UNC Chapel Hill. I'm really excited to be able to, um, to be here and chat with you all just a little bit about Carolina and try to give you a little bit more uh, understanding of who we are as a community and maybe more importantly, answer some of your questions about the application process here to Chapel Hill. So um, just off the bat, you know, I think it's important to note that we really believe in the strength of our campus community um, here at UNC Chapel Hill. And so we really look at the application and admission process as really just adding to and continuing to build onto that strength. Um, so that really, is why when we talk about your application to Carolina, we talk about you, right? We wanna focus on you, what you're gonna be bringing to our community, the experiences you've had, the context in which those experiences have been achieved. And so this really sort of underscores what you're gonna hear a lot from our office. And this is, an, this is that idea of uh, a comprehensive, holistic, uh, an individualistic review of your application. So as you have questions throughout this process about your application, remember, it's centered around you, right? We're going to read the application based on who you are and everything that you're able to provide us. We have a community that is built around these ideas of diversity, right? We, we acknowledge that students are coming with different backgrounds and experiences, and we know that our students um, really feed off of those different um, experiences. And so that's a really important part of building this community for us is to bring all of these incredible students together with our wonderful faculty and staff in this environment that really encourages growth and cross-learning and really challenging, challenging each other to really get the best out of each and every one of our students. So on the screen there, you see some of our different academic interests and my favorite up there is the undecided one. It tells you that students come to Carolina, not always knowing what they wanna do, but really being able to find, by, find their passion by exploring our entire uh, academic curriculum. And so for the purposes of your application to UNC Chapel Hill, it's important to note that we do not look at your intended major. We don't admit directly into any um, specific major. All students are invited to join our College of Arts and Sciences, where you really explore all that Carolina has to offer, learn what you like, and maybe more importantly, learn what you don't like. So if you're undecided, or if you know exactly what it is you need to do, just know that you're gonna have time to explore all of the different opportunities here at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, right there in front of you are all the different parts of our application. I won't go through each one, um, but I just want to highlight some of the key components of the application process. You can apply through the Common App or Coalition. We don't have a preference. It's whichever is easiest for you and whichever you're, you're going to use to apply to the most colleges. Um, we do have an application fee and fee waiver. We do also have two specific short essay questions um, uh, that are unique to UNC Chapel Hill that really allow us to get to know you a little bit better. Um, there are some Excel at Carolina opportunities that you can learn more about on our website that are really just enhanced research and uh, um, educational opportunities, global opportunities, our honors program um, that you can express interest in. It's not required, but uh, if you're interested in any of those programs, just let us know through your application. You'll see test scores is listed there uh, with an asterisk. Um, as my colleague from Asheville mentioned earlier on, uh, we don't yet quite know whether or not um, the North Carolina Board of Governors is going to provide that testing waiver for this year. We traditionally have required either an SAT or ACT. Last year, we made it a test optional so students could self-report. Uh, once we have that information, we'll let our applicants know whether or not we're going to be requiring uh, an SAT or ACT exam. And then you're actually going to send to us on top of your application a letter of recommendation from a core academic teacher, a secondary school report in your transcript. And again, I'll highlight, we believe in a comprehensive holistic review of your application. So not one of these is more important than the other. The first year deadlines are there on the screen. Um, we have an early action, which is non-binding of October 15th. We also have a regular decision deadline of January 15th. We traditionally encourage students that are interested in coming to Carolina to apply early action. Um, but really choose the deadline that works best for you, whether you apply early action or regular decision, all students have until May 1, that national enrollment deadline, to let us know whether or not you plan on attending UNC Chapel Hill. And you can see there that we have a FAFSA and CSS profile deadline of March 1. 
you know, we believe in um, aggressively packaging our students with financial aid to make sure that a Carolina experience uh, is within your reach. Um, so by submitting the FAFSA, that free application for federal student aid and the CSS profile, we do require both here at Carolina. We feel like we're able to fully um, assess your financial need and make sure that this is a realistic experience for you and that you can come here knowing that you've earned your spot here at Carolina and we can support you financially throughout your time here at Chapel Hill. March 1 is the priority deadline to submit those items. Just by applying with your application, whether it's through the Common Effort Coalition, you'll automatically review, be reviewed for all of our merit scholarships. And I highly recommend checking out our financial aid website. There are budget calculators, there are chat boxes, there are also great tutorial videos about how to just simply submit and fill out the FAFSA and CSS profile, which can really be a great uh, benefit for all of you. Um, we are unfortunately are not offering in-campus visits right now. You can still uh, come to campus, explore Chapel Hill. We'd love to see you there. But if you have any questions, please feel free to send us an email, give us a call. We're here to answer your questions and really help you navigate this process. Thank you for the time, and we look forward to answering your questions. Alex, thanks so much to you and UNC Chapel Hill. Um, audience, wow, we've already heard from three great institutions, but we still have three to go. Just a friendly reminder to put those questions in the Q&A at any point, and you don't have to wait for a particular institution to present um, before putting your questions in there. Next up, I have the pleasure of introducing to you Lewisburg College. Take it away, Hunter, whenever you're ready. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, or good evening. Uh, my name is Hunter Kirby. I am one of the admissions counselors here at Lewisburg College. <clears throat> I'm also an alum from Lewisburg College. So we are very unique. I like to call us the unicorn of your higher education options because we are the oldest two-year college in the country, and we are also the only residential two-year college in North Carolina. So our students come to Lewisburg to work on that associate's degree. You are able to live on campus. We are a two year, but everything looks and feels like a four year school. And then you're able to transfer uh, to the four year school of your dreams to find that dream major in that dream location. So 92% of our graduates do go on to a four year school after Lewisburg. We do have really small classes and we also have athletics. So we compete in the NJCAA. Uh, we have 13 different athletic teams. So really whatever you're interested in, we have something for you there. Your books are included in your tuition and so is your laundry and freshman, you are allowed to have a car here. So Lewisburg, we are about 30 minutes north of Raleigh, so we're kind of north central North Carolina. Uh, Lewisburg is a small town, but you're never away from Raleigh Forest. So Lewisburg definitely has everything that you need. The admissions process. So for freshmen, it's pretty standard. You apply at lewisburg.edu or you can go through CFNC. There is a $25 application fee, but we're gonna waive that for you if you come for a visit. We are offering in-person visits, so we do those Monday through Friday. We're also gonna have an open house this Saturday. So if you're interested, just let us know and we can go ahead and get you registered. We also need your high school transcripts. And if you were doing the enrolled, send us that college transcript as well. We are ACT and SAT optional. Transfers, it's the same exact thing. We're just gonna need your college transcripts and a Dean's evaluation form. So we have four different degree options for you. So like I mentioned earlier, we are a junior college. So we offer four different associate degrees. You can look at them like pre-majors. So we have an associates in arts. When I was a student here, this is what I worked on. I ended up majoring in criminal justice. But if you're interested in things like communications, pre-law, psychology, social work, journalism, history, political science, that associates in arts, that's a really good fit for you. If you're interested in health sciences or engineering, I would definitely recommend that associates in science. And we do have articulation agreements with the entire UNC system. So if you graduate with your associate's degree in arts and science, arts and or science, you can take every class you completed here at Lewisburg and take it with you to any one of the 17 schools in the UNC system. We also offer a business degree. So it's a good way to kind of figure out what area of business you want to major in, if you want to be in, finance, accounting, marketing, communications, uh, hospitality management, come figure that out at Lewisburg and then decide what you wanna major in once you get to that next school. And we also have an associates in education. Uh, so one thing we do like to do, at least pre-COVID, we would get you in the classroom your first semester here. So you can actually see what age group you wanna work with. Um, so I think that's really important for you so you can figure out if education is what you wanna do your freshman year, 
as opposed to your senior year. We have five different on-campus learning labs. These are all included in your tuition. Academic Success Center, so that is for peer tutoring. So if you need a little extra help, you can get another student to help you out. And then we also have resources for math, reading, writing, and the science lab. This is our Learning Partners program. So Learning Partners is a fee-based tutoring service that we offer. You're gonna be matched up one-on-one -on -one with one of our learning specialists. And really y'all are gonna come up with the best way for you to learn. So if you have things that you kind of need to overcome, if you need a little extra help in certain areas, Learning Partners is there for you. Uh, you meet at least twice a week for one hour. And on our website, uh, on our website, you can find out some more information about Learning Partners. We have different clubs and organizations on campus, so there's definitely a lot to get involved in. One of the benefits of being a junior college is you don't have to wait behind a bunch of juniors and seniors. If you want to be in the theater or dance program, you can get some of those performing roles your first semester here. Uh, we have different things like student ambassadors, hurricane advisors, resident advisors as well. If you want to be in student government, you can do that. The president of our SGA association is a freshman this year. So you can really get the ball rolling and boost that resume for that school after Lewisburg. We also have different intramural sports. So whatever you're interested in, there's plenty to, get, plenty to get involved in there. That's a little bit about athletics. All of our teams are listed on there. And again, it's the same way with the clubs and organizations, our starters are freshmen and sophomores. So if you're into athletics, this can be a great avenue to get a little more film so you can still transfer to a four-year school and continue your athletic goals. Institutional aid, so we have merit scholarships, we have performing arts scholarships, we have athletic scholarships, and then of course outside scholarships. So we really encourage students to take a look at some of those local scholarships, meet with your guidance counselor to see what's gonna be available for you. Um, we're proud to say that 100% of our students receive a scholarship for your college. Our Great Futures office, we definitely take a lot of pride in where our students are going to after Lewisburg. That's really how we measure our success here. So the Great Futures office, they're gonna help you for life after Lewisburg. So if it's finding some job shadowing, some interview skills, if you wanna work on that resume, this can be a good place for you. And we can make sure that you're taking the classes you need at Lewisburg that are, but that are also gonna help you at that next school. Uh, this is where some of our graduates went to last year. So use Lewisburg for whatever you want to do, and it can take you wherever you want to go to afterwards. And this is our contact information. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Thanks so much, Hunter, to you and Lewisburg College. Great presentation. Um, next up, I have the opportunity to introduce to you Furman University. Take it away, Zach, whenever you're ready. Awesome, thank you. And good evening, everyone. We're so excited that you were able to just come and join us tonight. I know I speak on behalf of Furman University and probably everyone else to say, um, thanks for coming out and just taking some time to learn about some wonderful colleges. But we are Furman University. Um, and the first slide I'm gonna share with you uh, just kind of gives you a good sense for our size, our allocation, so forth and so on. So we have 2,800 students. We like to say we're on the bigger side of small, uh, since we are a small liberal arts institution, um, we want to make sure that we are having an environment that's going to be large enough to where you're not going to feel like you're just in this rut each and every day of running into the same person, um, while simultaneously being able to create meaningful and deep relationships. So that's where you see our student population is that size. Uh, we are represented by 48 different states. 22 different countries and 72% of the students are coming from outside the state of South Carolina. So whether you are in South Carolina or you're outside the state, you're gonna find plenty of people to be able to interact with and plenty of different cultures, diversities, so forth and so on that you're gonna be able to experience while you are on our campus. So on the top left-hand side, you can actually see our location because that's just as important as who we're bringing in. We're located in Greenville, South Carolina. You, know, you may or may not have heard of it, but it is a uh, smaller, relatively medium-sized city that is very much up and coming in the United States. It's the fourth fastest growing city in the nation right now. And there are so many opportunities for our students to get involved with professional development, uh, as well as just having a good time and enjoying the city life. 
our location of campus is actually just 15 minutes away. So you're not just immersed all the time in the downtown area, but it's a quick and easy drive right down what we call Poinsett Highway to be able to get be able to go and experience a fun, vibrant downtown area. We're also located pretty close to a number of different other larger fun cities. So Charlotte and Atlanta, just about two hours away. We're only about three and a half hours from the beaches of South Carolina and just a 45 minute drive to the Blue Ridge Mountains. So plenty of opportunities to go out and have fun in the surrounding area as well. With the smaller student population that I mentioned earlier, we're able to tra translate that well over into the classroom. We have an average class size of 15 and a 10 to one student to faculty ratio. Uh, now what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to have smaller class sizes um, as well as have meaningful interactions with those professors as well. So they're gonna take the time not just to get to know you within the academic setting, but to also be your advisors, your mentors, and people who are gonna help you in any way, shape, or form that they can. And this was one of my favorite aspects of Furman as a whole, was having professors that cared so much more than just about how my academics were going, but rather how my life was going as well. One big aspect of Furman is what we like to call the Furman advantage, because we know that college is a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and all sorts of things. So we want to make sure that we are bringing it to you at a level that you are imagining it now. So what the Furman advantage is at its base and at its core is a personalized four-year pathway to graduation, making sure that we are getting you the experiences, the opportunities inside the classroom, but also outside the classroom that you're dreaming of right now for your college experience. And that's where the rest of those diamonds come into play. So the second one being high impact engaged learning experiences, research, internships, study away. We as Furman are working to make sure that we guarantee access to each and every single one of those. And we're also working to make sure that you have at least one of those by the time that you graduate. And you're not going to have to do that alone. You're not going to have to find those things alone because that's where the team of advisors and mentors are going to come into play to help you along your path. So your professors, as well as plenty of offices that are dedicated to helping you find those impactful experiences. And then we have experiences right on campus as well, because we don't want you to think you have to go outside of wherever we are to find those. So we have various different institutes and centers that are going to help you explore and tackle those issues all while still on campus. But enough about the academic side of campus, what is going on as far as living on campus goes. So we're actually 100% residential, meaning you're gonna be living on campus all four years. And you'll have different places to go and live. I invite you to go check out our housing, um, <clears throat> housing website um, as they have some wonderful comprehensive videos that actually show you each and every single area that you're gonna be living on campus. So the place you're gonna be living as a freshman, and then the places that you're going to be living as a junior and a senior are two totally different areas with different environments to get you um, experience in each of those. We also have 18 Division I sports, which is really exciting to be at a smaller school and still get to have a big school feel whenever you go out to those game days, being able to be part of tailgates, going and cheering on your classmates all at the same time as well. It's a lot of fun there. There are plenty of other ways to get involved, 165 different clubs and organizations ranging from uh, club in our mural sports to SGA to event planning. Honestly, whatever you're looking for, you'll probably be able to find it on campus. And even if you can't, we'd love for you to bring that idea because we want as many clubs and organizations as we can to represent all of our students. Now, I know that was a lot and it was a very quick overview, um, but with our limited time, I want to make sure you also understand how to apply. And if you can, I invite you to take a little screen graph right here because this is some pretty important information just regarding of what the application process looks like. In the left graph, you'll see the different materials that we need for your application. You can find this on the Common App or the Coalition App, um, and we have various different <clears throat> materials that we're going to need from you to apply. And you can see the various different application rounds, the deadlines, notifications, so forth and so on. I'll throw those in the chat too or link to those so you can get those really quickly. And then finally, just our price tag. This is where we like to say we start the conversation, but obviously we can change it um, and we want to work to change it. And that's where those admission scholarships come into play, talent-based and the need-based aid through the FAFSA and the CSS profile as well. Thanks, y'all. Thanks so much, Zach, to you and Furman University. Our final presentation tonight will be from Savannah College of Art and Design. Leah, take it away whenever you're ready.
Thank you. Hey guys, my name is Leah Bear. I'm an assistant director of admissions here at SCAD. And today we're going to go over some of the basics of being a creative career. So SCAD was actually founded in 1978 and for more than 40 creative years, we've grown to become the most comprehensive and connected art and design university in the world. With campus locations in Atlanta, Georgia, a study abroad location in Lacoste, France, and then our largest home base where we were initially founded in Savannah, Georgia. And then of course we have our comprehensive e-learning program as well. Now our university is really diverse. We have about 15,000 students representing all 50 states and over 100 different countries. In fact, more than 25% of the SCAD student body population is international. And we offer more programs of study and specialization than any other art and design university in the US. That means we offer over 100 programs to choose from, over 40 majors and more than 75 branches. But no matter what program you end up in here at SCAD, one thing remains true to all of them, and that is this university's stellar alumni employment rate of 99%. That means 99% of the spring 2019 alumni were either employed, seeking further education, or both within 10 months of their graduation. And 91% of those students were doing so in a creative field. These extraordinary numbers are a true testament to our talented and ambitious students. And it speaks volumes about the quality of a SCAD education because our alumni and their work are quite literally everywhere. So to show that off for you today, here's one of my favorite recent alums, Christopher John Rogers. So following his graduation from SCAD, Christopher launched his own line with his fellow geek, Jacob Shazir. And you may have even seen some of his fantastical garments on icons like Michelle Obama and Lizzo. Even Lady Gaga has worn one of his amazing gowns. And here at SCAD, we champion a culture of small class settings and individualized attention for all of our students. Most of our classes will not go over 30 and all of our major classes will cap at 20. So whether it's in the boardroom or the classroom, your SCAD professors are here to love their valuable experience and networks that they built over their career to help you guys start and be successful with your own careers. So whether you imagine yourself walking the red carpet or on the cover of Forbes, there truly is a place for every single student here at SCAD. And best part, as a student, you'll have your own chance to collaborate with leading global companies through SCAD Pro. This is where our students dream of design solutions for global brands. Recently, our students got to partner and collaborate with Disney to reimagine a Disney resort. They pitched the future of advertising to Google and a pair even marketed a driverless car for Volvo. This SCAD Pro program has hosted more than 500 collaborations with over 300 top global brands. And it's even led to over 200 direct job and internship offers for our students. Proving that real world experience really is going to set you apart from your competition when it comes to landing that dream job. Now, SCAD offers everything to suit your interest in or out of the classroom as well. At our Atlanta and our Savannah locations, we have over 100 student clubs from cultural, community, and leadership organizations to academic and special interest. We also have competitive varsity and our collegiate athletics and intramural sports. And the coolest part is when you're accepted to SCAD, you're accepted to all of our campus locations. So you can start your studies in SCAD Atlanta, a thriving film and business hub, venture to the peaceful scenic hills of Southern France at SCAD Lacoste, and then circle back across the Atlantic to the beautiful historic squares and cobblestone streets of Savannah, Georgia. And if your adventures take you somewhere else along the way, you can always continue your education with our SCAD e-learning platform. Now, for my freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors in high school, I do have some options for you while you're still in high school to get better acquainted with us here at SCAD. And those are through our pre-college summer programs. So if you are a rising sophomore, junior, or senior, you can begin acquiring your talents at a one-week SCAD summer seminars program offered in Savannah, Atlanta, or online. Or if you're a rising senior, you can take two college classes with us during your summer, either in person at Savannah or Atlanta or online. And then if you're wanting to do more than just the summer, you can actually join us for our joint enrollment classes and take those curriculums while you're completing your high school. So here's your next steps and what it takes to apply. Juniors and seniors, listen up, this is for you. 
Seniors, you are not too late. We are in a rolling admission spaces and juniors, this is a perfect time to start your application. First, you can apply through our website, scad.edu or the Common App. You'll be assigned a personal admissions application file and a checklist. That advisor will help you complete your file, fitting your transcripts and your test scores. We are test optional through fall 2022. In the meantime, you can visit us at scad.edu to see a when you can come tour for a daily tour or even one of our in-person open house days. And if you're not quite ready or don't have the time in your schedule to see us in person, you can always keep in touch with us on any of our social media platforms. For those wanting to stay in touch and stay connected, go ahead and grab your camera app and scan my QR code. This will help you stay connected. It's a two minute form that will help us send you custom invites for what you'd like to do in the future. I'll also link in the chat for your convenience. And last but not least, this is my contact information. Please grab a screenshot or a photo and I hope to hear from you guys soon. Leah, thank you so much to you and Savannah College of Art and Design. Now I'd like to um, invite all of our presenters to turn back on their cameras and give a little bit of extra information about your institution. So we'll go in the same order you presented in, in a round robin format. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Or if you'd rather provide an interesting or fun fact, that is totally fine too. So we'll start with um, University of North Carolina Asheville first. Thanks, Courtney. Um, okay, so there's a lot of really cool stuff about UNC Asheville, but my favorite tradition uh, far and away has to be our turning of the maple celebration. So people come from all over the world um, to see Asheville during peak leaf, uh, which is when most of the leaves um, have changed and are the really bright orange and red uh, and yellow colors uh, before the end of uh, autumn. And so we have a celebration. Our quad is lined with maple trees and uh, scientists will go out um, like some of our professors at peak leaf and decide when that will be. And all of classes stop, everybody goes out to the quad and there's pumpkin bowling and maple cookies and apple cider. And it's just a time to appreciate the beautiful space that we live and to have a brief recess from some of the stress right around midterms um, to enjoy Asheville and the fact that we live in such a really beautiful place. So that's my favorite. Becca, I think you're up next. Sorry, I wasn't sure if you were going to say something first. Um, I think one of my favorite traditions that we always have here on campus, so I touched on it briefly, but the Upstate 48, those 48 days of nonstop events at the beginning of every new school year is hands down the best time. Um, when I was a freshman here, um, one of the very first events I went to as a Spartan was a paint party that was part of our Upstate 48, and it was exactly what I needed to just drop all of the stress and all of the nerves that I needed with being away from home for the first time, with trying to adjust to a big life change. Um, so that's what a lot of these events are for. You know, they really just kind of get you acclimated to the school. And I mean, not only is it so much fun to just hawk paint at random strangers, but um, but it really does just drop the stress and it really just gets you excited. Um, but that's one of my favorites. And then we always have food trucks coming in and movies on the lawn. So Upstate 48 is hands down my, my favorite school tradition. Yeah, favorite tradition at UNC Chapel Hill is rushing Franklin Street. So anytime Carolina Athletics, specifically basketball, either wins a major game, really just beating Duke or a national title, wherever you are on campus, you are supposed to drop everything you are doing and sprint as fast as possible to Franklin Street to celebrate. And so that's a tradition that for the students who get to participate in it, hopefully every student does at some point, um, it's very memorable for them. Hunter, yeah, I think you're next. Okay. Uh, so for me, I love food. So I would say my favorite thing when I was a student here was our exam cram. Uh, so it's during that exam week and your faculty and staff members, they uh, feed you a big uh, pancake dinner with all the good breakfast stuff. And then as a staff member, I'd say my favorite tradition is Fried Chicken Thursday, which is a huge deal here. Um, the line is all the way out the door. So definitely stop on by. 
Yeah, one of one of my favorite traditions is Furman as a student and just as a staff member, um, just getting to witness it is our last day of class celebration or what we like to call LDOC. And it's just a big time for students just to maybe not go to class or go to class, you know, whatever you're feeling. Um, but there's always food trucks, there's games and different ways to just enjoy spending time together. But the best part of it all is uh, all cult <clears throat> culminates senior year when you get to go have a giant pool party in one of our large fountains in front of the library. So as a freshman, you see it happening. You're like, what the heck is going on? But then by the time you're a senior, you've been building up all this anticipation. Then you just get to go jump in, play in floats, kayaks, you know, whatever people decide to bring out. But it's just a lot of fun, a lot of fun that brings a lot of people together at the end of the school year. Hey, so here at SCAD, we're really lucky to have a lot of large scale signature events like our fashion show and our, our film festival. But my favorite is by far the couple weeks leading up to film festival as we wait for the announcement to drop of who's going to be on campus. Um, and last year, we were really lucky to have John Krasinski and his wife Emily Blunt on campus, and I'm a huge fan of both. So it was really cool to be a part of that. We actually shut down Broughton Street, which is our main street in Savannah. We have literally a red carpet and we do a week of film festival, film screenings. We have staff um, workshops with all of our students. So you're not just seeing these people from afar like a creeper, you're like, you're talking to them. They're in class with you. They're doing workshops with you. So that is my favorite part. And that anticipation of like, who's gonna be here is the best part of the year for me. Oh, wow. Those are all so fun. And audience, I hope that you're already getting excited about um, joining in one of those um, traditions in your near future. Um, I'd like to say thank you so much for joining us tonight. As you close out, there'll be a quick four question survey. We hope that you'll provide us with some feedback. Sign up for more sessions. I know that you can agree this is a really fun way of learning about six schools in a short amount of time. So we still have two more hours to participate tonight. So sign up. Um, that sign up and the recording will be available at strivescan.com Carolinas. And with that, best wishes with your college church and bye everyone.